Hello everybody. The purpose of this video is just to work through a few example problems for you. Uh, these questions are regarding momentum, specifically impulse, and some of the different types of collision questions that you will get. So looking at question number one, it says we have a 12 kilogram hammer and it strikes a nail at a velocity of 6.25 meters per second and comes to rest in 0 .008 seconds. What is the impulse given to the nail? What is the average force acting on the nail? So first thing we're going to do is identify the variables that we are given. So we have a mass of 12 kilograms. We have an initial velocity of 6.25 meters per second. And then don't um, forget that we have to make sure that we're reading carefully comes to rest means that we have a final velocity of zero meters per second. We're given a time of 0 0.008 seconds for it to come to rest. And the first question they're asking is what is the impulse given to the nail? So in order to answer this question, let's just review really quickly. The word impulse means that our object experienced a change in its momentum. And if you recall, momentum is simply mass times velocity. So if an object experienced a change in its momentum, that means it experienced a change in its velocity. So in this particular problem, we are going to calculate our impulse by multiplying mass times the change in velocity, which is Vf minus Vi. So my impulse is 12 times 0 minus 6.25. Just a friendly reminder to make sure that you always plug your numbers into the formula exactly the way that the formula is, is written. And yes, in this case, we end up with a negative change in velocity because our object decreased in speed. So we get negative 75 uh, kilogram meters per second. And then looking at the numbers that we used in this calculation, uh, we technically should make this three sig figs. And I'm going to write kilogram meters per second as my unit here because that's what I was using in the numbers that I plugged in were kilograms and meters per second. Impulse can also be expressed using Newton seconds, but I did not use Newtons or seconds, so I chose not to make those my units for this question. Part two is asking, um, what is the force that caused this impulse? So impulse can also be expressed as the force applied over some time, which causes the object to experience its change in momentum. So for this question, if we are solving for our force, we would need to rearrange by dividing both sides by T. So force is impulse divided by time. So F equals negative 75 divided by 0 0.008, which gives us not a negative, sorry, 9375 Newtons. This is a negative value for my force because it's working to oppose the object's motion or it would be in the negative direction to the motion. Again, considering sig figs, we would round this to a negative 9400 Newtons. Okay, question number two. A 238 kilogram car moving at 19.1 meters per second in the x direction hits from behind a second car moving at 12.4 meters per second in the same direction. If the second car has a mass of 790 kilograms and a speed of 14.1 meters per second right after the collision, what is the velocity of the first car after this sudden collision? So this is obviously a collision question. I find it helpful to just sketch a little picture for myself. It helps me to organize um, what belongs where, and I also find it useful in pairing up my units, um, sorry, my variables together so that I put the right combination of mass and velocity for that specific object. So our first object 
has a mass of 238 kilograms, and it says that it is moving in the positive direction or to the right with a velocity of 19.1 meters per second. The second object is moving with a velocity of 12.4 meters per second, and it says in the same direction, so also to the right. This car has a mass of 790 kilograms. Okay, so they're going to collide, all right? So after the collision, we're given some more information, which indicates for us that these two objects remained separate. So object one, object two, those masses do not change. So it says if the second car has a mass of 790 kilograms and a speed of 14.1 meters per second right after the collision. So that makes this velocity of 14.1 our final velocity or our velocity after the collision. So it belongs over here. What is the velocity of the first car after the collision? So this is what they're asking us to solve for. So looking at our momentum formulas, we would have M1V1 plus M2V2 is equal to M1V1, oops, sorry, 1, plus M2V2. And I'm going to put I's here for initial and F's here for final, so we can make sure we keep straight what belongs where. Um, if we're going to do our algebra from here, they are asking us to solve for our final velocity of this object. So algebraically, we would need to subtract over the M2V2 final. And then once that is moved, then we would have to divide by M1. So this is how we would set up our algebra. For those of you who like to plug your numbers in first, it would look like this. M1, 238 times 19.1 plus M2, 790 times 12.4 equals M1, 238 times V1 final plus M2, 790 times 14.1. And this step right here should be super, super simple. If you are utilizing the picture image like I have demonstrated here to pair up your variables, you can see that I basically took the information that I illustrated up top and I just slid those numbers down into the appropriate spot for the formula. So I think it makes it very simple and easy to um, plug our numbers in once we've identified what formula we should have. So in order to do the algebra from here, we would want to simplify all of the parts that we can so we can simplify the entire left side. And so that should come out to 14341.8 equals 238 VF. And then this should simplify to 11139. So then we would subtract that number over. And this would give us 3202.8 equals 238 times VF. And then we simply divide. So we get 13.457. There's some more digits in my calculator there. And so once again, if we're going to look at our significant figures, this final answer should be rounded to two significant figures. So the final velocity of object one is 13 meters per second. Okay, next question. Josh is riding his skateboard at 1.39 meters per second 
which has a mass of 0.377 kilograms when he falls off. His son, Sam, who has a mass of 12.5 kilograms, jumps onto the skateboard, and together he continues traveling at 2.15 meters per second. What is Sam's velocity when he jumped onto the skateboard? So for this question, um, we have two objects that begin separate, and then they're going to end up together or connected. Um, this question you may need to read again to comprehend exactly what is happening in the story, but basically we have a skateboard that is moving forward and then Sam jumps on top of it. So over here, Sam and the skateboard are now connected, okay? So reading through the problem, we can see that this skateboard has an initial velocity of 1.39 meters per second, a mass of 0.377 kilograms. Sam has a mass of 12.5 kilograms. And then together, they will travel with a velocity of 2.15 meters per second. So our formula would be M1V1 plus M2V2 equals M1 plus M2 times our final velocity. They have a shared velocity because they are now moving together as one combined object. So this question is asking us to solve for the initial velocity of Sam. So this is going to be our unknown, okay? So uh, we would want to manipulate this formula in the same manner as the previous question. We would need to subtract over our M1V1 initial and then and then we would need to divide by our M2 in order to isolate the initial velocity of our second object, which would be Sam in this particular question. Um, for those of you who would like to plug your numbers in first, this gets set up as 0.377 times 1.39 plus 12.5 times V2 equals, and then here, I didn't write anything in the picture, but Sam's mass does not change, the skateboard's mass does not change. So we're simply gonna plug those numbers in. So the skateboard was 0.377 plus Sam was 12.5, and then that is being multiplied by their combined velocity of 2.15, okay? So if we are continuing from here, then our math work simplifies to 0 0.52403 plus 12.5v. And then the right side simplifies to 27.68555. So we're going to subtract this value over. Okay, so 12.5V is equal to 27.16152, and then we're going to divide by that mass. Which gives me 2, oops, sorry about that, 2.17. 1729, again, more digits in my calculator. So rounding for sig figs, our initial velocity of object two is going to be 2.17 meters per second. Okay, this will be our last example. Owen has a mass of 1.28 kilograms and he is sitting on a velociraptor which is sitting still. If he jumps off the raptor to the east at 1.5 meters per second, and the raptor travels west at 0.11 meters per second, what is the mass of the raptor? 
So this is essentially a recoil question. And a recoil, or sometimes they're called explosion collisions, are situations where our total momentum is equal to zero. Okay, and um, in this case, we do have two objects and they are going to be moving at the end. So if we want to just take a quick second and review, your total momentum is simply the combined momentum of your two objects. So the only way mathematically that our two objects could add up to a total of zero, they must be the same value, but one must be positive and one must be negative. And if we think about what's happening in this question, they're implying that as he jumps off, he's applying a force onto the raptor, obviously. So one force is going to push Owen in one direction, and the equal and opposing force is going to push the raptor in the opposite direction. So because this is a vector value, those different directions are going to result in one positive and one negative. Those momentums are going to be the same, which is what will allow them to add up to zero. Okay, so reading through the problem... We have Owen, and he has a mass of 128 kilograms, and then we have the raptor, and it says that Owen is sitting, so his velocity is zero. It says the velociraptor is sitting, so his velocity is also zero. As a result of him jumping, we now see that Owen jumps off the raptor and he is now moving east and the raptor is traveling west. Well, I guess I should switch these labels so it makes sense for our story. Sorry about that. Okay, so Owen is now going to be moving at one Point five meters per second to the east and the raptor is going to be moving at 0.11 meters per second to the west. So here is our setup. Our formula <clears throat> would be M1V1 plus M2V2 equals M1V1 plus M2V2. Remember, the left side is your initial, the right side is your final. In our illustration, we can see that both of these objects have a velocity of zero initially. So it doesn't matter what you multiply by zero, it all becomes zero. So both of these momentums are going to end up being zero. So this whole left side is just a total momentum of zero. On the right, uh, we were given the mass of Owen but we were not given the mass of the raptor. And that's actually what they're asking us to solve for. So we're going to plug in our numbers here, and we would see that we have m times 0.11 plus 128 times 1.5. Now if we go back and read again carefully, it says the raptor is going one direction and Owen is going the other. So again, remembering that velocity is a vector, we must use positive and negative values in order to illustrate that. So the velocity of the raptor actually needs to be indicated here with a negative 0.11. If you fail to put that negative in, then it will affect um, your calculation, okay? So then we're going to simplify what we can and then do our algebra. So this simplifies to 192. So then we're going to subtract that over to both sides. So negative 192 is equal to negative 0.11 meters. So then we divide that. And we get a mass of 17. 45.45 and that ends up repeating considering our sig figs here um, this should be 1700 kilograms just a friendly reminder that your mass is a scalar quantity so it should always end up as a positive number 
if you're doing a calculation and that is not the case, you should probably go back and look um, at your math work to see where your mistake was, okay? All right, um, for those of you who are wondering if there's maybe a quicker or easier way to approach this problem since the whole side ended up being zero, yes, there is. I'm gonna take a quick second and show you that right now. So anytime we have a collision, um, sorry, a recoil question or one of these explosion type questions, we are um, understanding right off the bat that our total momentum is zero on one of the sides. Some questions, it'll be the initial that will be zero. Other questions, it will be the final. But what you need to understand is if that one side is zero and we're solving for something, the only way that we can do our algebra is to move one of these momentums to the other side. So when we do that, we must subtract that variable over. And so what this simplifies is a formula that shows us that these two momentums are set equal to each other. Remember, mass times velocity is momentum. So we can see from this formula that mass and velocity of object one is equal, the same value as, mass and velocity of object two. The only difference is that one of our objects has a positive value for momentum and the other object has a negative value for momentum. If we go back and reconsider the definitions for momentum and impulse and change in momentum and understand how Newton's laws are applied to causing that change in momentum, then it makes perfect sense that this formula would simplify so that their momentums are the same, but because they're in opposite directions, one is positive and one is negative.